Hello, welcome to our Wednesday night devotion and prayer time. I'd like to welcome you. This is July the 15th. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule to worship with us tonight. I'd like to begin by sharing a couple of announcements with you. Thank you for your continued prayers and support during this difficult time. Our Sunday morning services have been going well. We are three weeks into doing in-person services, and I want to say a special thank you to John Witt and our safety risk management team. They've been doing a, an outstanding job of making everything run smoothly. I also want to say a special thank you to our deacons who have been helping with signing people in and cleaning up afterward and making everything run as smoothly as it can be. A special thank you to our staff for their work as they continue to minister through this difficult time. We all are doing our very best to keep you and your family safe as well as continuing to worship and to minister to you and to meet your needs. So thank you for your support, for your prayers, and for your understanding. I also want to remind you that right now we are still asking that you would make a reservation to call or go online so we can prepare for your visit and your time with us. And the reason we ask you to do that is so we can assign you a seat so you can be socially uh, distanced from someone. If you know that you're not going to be able to be here, if you would, let us know that as soon as possible so we can make uh, plans to get others in or to move people around so we may not have to set people up in the balcony. But if you would just help us out by doing that. And the reason we ask you to call is so we can know how to place everyone and to keep track of who's here and if someone were to get sick. So thank you for your understanding and for your patience. Also, if you worshiped with us on Sunday, I, I'm i imperfect, as many of you know, but I just wanted to correct. I made reference to a passage of Scripture when Jesus said, you are the light of the world. I think in the message I said that that came from John, but it was Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 and 16. I think it was John I said in the sermon, so I just want to correct myself. Some of you may take notes or keep track. So I'm human and I make mistakes. So I apologize that I misreferenced uh, a scripture that I had shared on Sunday. But tonight I want to talk a few minutes before we uh, get into our prayer time. With everything that's been going on, these are difficult times. You've heard me say it You've heard me preach it, you read it in the paper, on social media, or everywhere you turn, and it just seems like as soon as we feel like we have reached a, a breakthrough time in our uh, state or our, our country or our world, it seems like we get knocked back down. We think that the cases of the coronavirus are getting lower, and then all of a sudden there's a spike as things try to reopen and as places of business and churches try to regather, seems like it's more of a challenge. We have the constant bickering between Republicans and Democrats, and we have the constant uh, debates between a lot of uh, what's going on with mandates to wear a mask or people who feel like their freedom is being taken away by being asked to do these things. Anyway, I just felt led tonight, and I've been praying about this time together because I in no way, shape, or form ever want to uh, hurt or offend anyone. I understand that I and we are never going to please everyone. That's why I always try to please God first and foremost. And, and I pray that would be your desire to always try to please God and to glorify Him uh, before anything or anyone else. But I just wanted to share some passages of Scripture tonight that I believe 
are very relevant for what we're going through today. I shared with someone earlier today in a text that, you know, our church is filled with with Democrats and filled with Republicans and and people that are anti all the above and, and maybe have their own political beliefs or beliefs about things that are going on. We have people that have conspiracy theories. We have people that are very opinionated on their interpretation of what's happening right now. And I've shared uh, before in a message and I was sharing with uh, some folks in the office earlier today that years ago, um, we had our current governor who happened to be Republican uh, who he and his wife were coming to worship with us. And then we had a former governor and his wife who happened to be a Democrat who came to worship and our ushers set them beside one another on the same pew. And as I looked out, I was thrilled that a Republican governor and his wife and a Democratic governor and his wife could sit together on the same pew and worship. And do you know why I believe they could do that? It's because I and we as a church have not tried to preach politics. We've tried to preach Jesus Christ. And when we're preaching Jesus and when we're preaching the truth of God's word, then we can't worry about uh, pleasing everyone because this is not Tide's word. This is God's word and God's truths. So I pray tonight that as you hear these passages of scripture and as we have this time together, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart and maybe convict your heart and my heart that we might be everything that God would have us to be. We are called to be holy in an unholy world, we are called to be the light in a world that's filled with a lot of evil and a lot of darkness. We are called to be the, the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, to be his mouthpiece. And we know that there are a lot of unbelievers and a lot of people that are not mature in their faith. And they're only going to hear and see what, what they want to hear and see and not necessarily hear what the Word of God says or what the Holy Spirit is telling us. So tonight I want to share with you out of the book of Titus. You remember that Titus, which is a short uh, letter, was written to Titus from Paul. Titus was on the island of Crete. Paul had established a church there, and he put Titus, who he referred to as his son or, or his uh, child in the ministry. And Titus was to be the, the leader in this church. And uh, it was a growing church, but there were also a lot of uh, folks who were not mature yet in their faith and a lot of outside influences. So Paul was trying to encourage Titus as Titus was trying to encourage these early believers and their faith and how we are to live godly lives even when the world in which we live isn't always godly. And so God led me to this passage, which I think is so relevant for us today. And it's found in chapter 3, if you have your Bible and you want to turn with me, Titus chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. Remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities. Well, I want to stop right there. In recent days, we have had mandates put forth by our state's governor in wearing the mask to try to keep people safe. And again, I'm, I'm on God's side. I, I want to preach what God's word shares with us. And so I understand sometimes the word of God is offensive to people. But when it says remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, this is a theme all throughout God's word. And especially with Paul, 
And I want to share some other passages that are found in God's Word that talk about this, this very thing. Uh, one being when Paul wrote in Romans chapter 13, it said, he said, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except which God has established. I want to remind you that God established government. God established the church. God established the family. And so these are all establishments from God. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good, but if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. These are words that I think are so applicable to us today. And not only does he share that we are to submit to these God-established institutions or authorities, but he says, as I've already shared during this season, that we are to pray for them. First Timothy chapter 2, Paul wrote, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed to this has now been witnessed to at the proper time. And for this purpose I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying and a true and faithful teacher of the Gentiles. But Paul was saying how important it is that we as Christians, followers of Christ, we are to pray for all people, for those who are in places of authority, that this pleases God when we do this. And then I also want to read on over in 1 Peter chapter 2. When Peter wrote, and understand when, when Paul and Peter were writing these things, the wicked emperor Nero, who was godless, was in power. And so they were asking that Christians submit to these authorities. It does not mean we always agree with what our leaders are saying or, or what they're doing, but we are called to be good citizens we know that we are aliens or foreigners in this world our citizenship is in heaven but while we are on this earth we are to model what it means to be law-abiding citizens hear these words that peter wrote in first peter chapter 2 dear friends i urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul, live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds 
and glorify God on the day he visits us. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake. Did you hear that? Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God and honor the emperor. All of these passages could have been written today. That's so amazing how God's word is as relevant today as it was when it was first written because they so apply to today's time and what we are going through. Paul said to Titus, remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient. Just yesterday, when it says be obedient, and I shared this past Sunday, if you worshiped with us, that we are called to be obedient to God's word. We are to be obedient to his commands. As a matter of fact, we discussed that that's how we show God that we love him by obeying his commands. And this is how we show our respect to our authorities by obeying their commands. Just yesterday, my family, they were outside when my son began to video an airplane that was writing the words, and you've seen this on the news or social media by now, an airplane that was spelling out with its uh, exhaust from its fuel, the words obey. I believe it was here in Frankfurt and also in Lexington. It's a mystery. Maybe by the time you watch this service this evening, it may not be, but as of right now, it's still a mystery. Did it mean we are to obey the mandates that are being laid out by our uh, governor or our local government? Is it a, a requirement or a, an encouragement rather to tell Christians to obey God's word and his law is it telling us just to obey and do the right thing, but we are also called not only to submit, but to obey. But here's the, the time when we don't have to obey, and I believe, and, and we can agree to disagree and still love each other, but when man's law goes against God's law is when I believe we as Christians have to stand up for the truth of God's word and know that we might be persecuted or we might uh, be uh, put down or, or maybe people will disagree. But I want to give you an example of, uh, remember after the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost and Peter and John were preaching and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees and the religious leaders of the day came up to, to Peter and John after they had um, healed the, the man who was crippled at the temple gate and remember that they put him in jail. Then I want to read to you out of Acts chapter 4, uh, beginning with verse 18. This is what the law of the time shared with Peter and John. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, which is right in God's eyes to listen to you or to him? You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. And so when man's law contradicts the law of God is when we as Christians have to stand up against uh, those uh, evil 
uh, laws or people that are trying to do something contrary to what we are taught in God's word. Peter and John said, we can't help but speaking about what we have seen and heard. So they were being obedient to God's calling to minister and to speak about Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, if, if I was told by local uh, government or, or even nationwide government or world government not to speak about Jesus Christ, then I would be arrested because I would certainly take a stand to stand up for Jesus Christ. And, you know, that's, that's what we're called to do, to do the right thing. But we are also to set an example. We are to obey the law. This is a silly example, but when you go down Versailles Road in Frankfurt and you get ready to turn right onto East Main or Georgetown Road, there is a turning lane and there's a, a red light there and it says no turn on red. Well, there's a lot of times where we can turn right on red, but it says no turn on red. How many times have you gone ahead? There's no cars coming. There's no pedestrians crossing the street. And so you'll just go ahead and run. And But we as Christians should set the example Maybe that 45 seconds or a minute that we sit there will save us from a wreck down the road or will keep us from uh, being in the middle of a, a wreck or, or something else happening. But we are to be law-abiding citizens. That's why when I was in college, I was convicted to uh, not litter. I mean, that might seem small or silly, but... We were on the road a lot growing up, my parents teaching in different counties from which we lived or ministering all over the place. And we might get a, a candy bar or a, a Coke or something. And, and I didn't think twice about just throwing that wrapper or can out the window. And I really, God convicted me in college as a Christian, what kind of example, what if everyone threw their candy wrapper or their Coke can out the, the window, how we would be living in one big junk pile. And so God convicted me not to litter. And we know that it's a law. We are not to litter to take care of our earth. And we as Christians should try our best of uh, following the law, whether it's turning right on red when it says no turn or, or, uh, going the speed limit. I mean, I know I've always uh, gone the speed limit, but for some of you, I'm kidding. I'm preaching to myself that we have to follow the law of the land and be good examples, good citizens as Christian, knowing that our citizenship is in heaven, but while we're here on earth, we have to do, do what's right. But it says to be obedient. We know Jesus was obedient to his father, so much so as we shared Sunday, he became obedient unto death, even death on the cross out of Philippians chapter 2, verse 8. But then it says to be ready to do whatever is good. And during this time, I pray that we would all look to do good. And I know we're not going to please everyone, but you try to do what's good. I I know that people see things differently. I, I shared with you all several weeks ago that I felt prompted by the Holy Spirit to, to go downtown to, to march with some folks that my heart was heavy for. And, and I want to tell you that I was just trying to do what I felt the Holy Spirit leading me to do. I, I wasn't chanting or putting anyone down. I, I was just trying to be a representation of God's church and the love of Jesus Christ. I, I don't stand for things that break the law or try to undermine what, uh, what's good and what's right and what's pleasing to God. I, I tried to uh, show our black brothers and sisters that we as the church love you and are praying for you. And on the flip side of that, 
as I went to do that, in no way, shape, or form was I saying I was anti-police because it's important that we pray for and support our police force and our uh, local first responders because these people are on the front lines and just because in every profession, including ministry, there are some people that don't always represent what's good and pleasing and what is right, the same way as on police force or teachers or lawyers or doctors, there's always some bad apples in every bunch. And so we can't just across the board say all police officers are bad or say that all people that do this are bad, but we must as Christians try to do good. But all that is to say is that, you know, I've taken some heat for just trying to go and be a, a silent presence to show love and support. And I know coming up soon, there's a, a back the blue uh, gathering at the old Capitol. And, and we are to support those who are on the front lines that are good and they are trying to uphold the law. And I, I'm not for defunding police. It, it reminded me of, I used to play in a lot of three-on-three -three basketball tournaments and basketball tournaments in general. And, and I remember playing in some tournaments where it was call your own foul. And I have to tell you, every single one of those tournaments where it was call your own foul, there was usually a fight that broke loose or blood on the court or somebody getting mad and because no one wants to call their own foul uh, because everyone says, I didn't touch you. I didn't foul you. I didn't do what was wrong. And so when we think about uh, trying to defund or, or not support those who are trying to keep us safe, we're headed down a dangerous path. But according to God's word, we are to show proper respect and love to everyone, whether it's black or white or Hispanic or, or rich or poor or, or uh, whatever. We are supposed to show proper respect and love to everyone. That's our call as Christians to do that. So it says, be ready to do whatever is good to slander no one. Paul said in Ephesians uh, chapter 4, verse 29, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths except for what is building up others that it may meet their needs and it may benefit those who listen. According to their needs, we would build people up. Don't slander anyone. When you get on social media and you blast the president or you blast the governor or you blast someone who sees thing different, things differently from you, then you're hurting your witness, especially if you're a Christian. We are to show proper respect. Again, we can agree to disagree and still love each other. People aren't going to see things just like you or just like me. But we have to be holy, to be set apart, to be different than what everybody else is saying and doing. To slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate and always be gentle toward everyone. As far as it depends on us, God's word says we are to live at peace with everyone and to be gentle. We know Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 and 29, and I just shared this passage with you all maybe last Wednesday. Jesus said, come to me, all you, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from, from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And so Jesus was gentle and humble, and he was perfect. And look, he was crucified. We're imperfect. So you know that we're going to be persecuted and people are going to find fault in us. And Here's what I want to leave you with before we pray. And I'm sorry to go a little bit longer tonight, but I guess this has been heavy on my heart. And 
I've labored with it and I so want everyone to get along and love each other and that we as Christians would do the right thing. I mean, we have people that that are not coming to church because we're asking people to wear masks. And then we have people that are calling us that maybe have gone to other churches and they're looking for a church that's requiring mass because their church did not require mask. And so, you know, this is, this is where we are. You know, we're trying to keep people safe. We're trying to do the right thing. We are trying to be gentle and humble and understanding. But I do not feel like that my freedom is being taken away. I think some people are reading more into thinking that this is just one step toward socialism or communism. And, and, uh, and I don't know what is underlying, but I just know from my heart that we as Christians have to do what's right and we have to submit to and follow the law of the land unless it is contrary to what God's word says. And then we can lovingly disagree and say this is the truth of what I know God's word to be. So I'm sure tonight there will be some of you all giving me angry emojis if you're watching on Facebook. And, and I'm sorry for that because I'm just trying to share with you what God's word says and where my heart is as a pastor, as a husband, as a father, that we are trying to keep people safe. We are trying to do the right thing. And I'm trying to follow the Holy Spirit's lead, uh, knowing that we're not going to please everyone. But uh, we, have, we have a responsibility as Christians to always respond in love and not react in anger. So uh, I pray the Holy Spirit would convict your heart tonight and mine to know we are doing our very best and we want you to worship as you feel safe, whether it's online, continue to do that. And I understand that uh, for some of you all, this is the best, um, this is the best way to do it right now with your underlying health issues or you're in that age category. For others of you who feel safe to come, we are social distancing, we're wearing masks, but I don't want you to feel like that your freedom's being taken. We're just trying to abide by the law and to keep you safe and to do our part in being responsible Christians and followers of Christ. I've talked too much. If my wife was here, she would be grabbing my arm to say, less is more. So I'm sorry tonight. I felt like this was heavy on my heart and I needed to, to share with you. So uh, let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for your faithfulness. You're faithful to us when, even when we failed to be faithful to you. And Lord, I pray tonight that you would just be with our world, be with our nation, with our state, with all of our churches, all of our families. And Lord, I, the last thing I ever want to do is to offend or hurt anyone. Father, I pray that we as Christians would set the example for a watching world how to be godly in an ungodly world, to be holy in an unholy world, to be Christ-like when many times it seems it's a pagan world. And Lord, I know that's what Paul was trying to encourage Titus to do on that island of Crete, that he would organize the church that was growing to be uh, the kind of church you would want it to be and to show responsibility and love to be the salt and light in a, in a dark world. And Lord, I pray that's what we would be. And I don't have it all figured out. And Lord, I pray tonight that I did not come across with a know-it-all spirit and attitude because I don't. And uh, each day I realize that I have still so much more to learn. But Lord, I pray that you would help us tonight to search our hearts. Forgive me, Lord, for anything I've said or done that could have hurt anyone or 
offended anyone. That's not my intention. My heart is to love everyone and to realize that there are hurting people on uh, two sides and there are hurting people, God, in our homes or our neighbors or within our church. So may we show love. Father, we, we pray for uh, equality. We pray for uh, social justice. We pray for our first responders, for our policemen and police women, our police officers, for our uh, fire personnel and EMTs and doctors and nurses, all those on the front line. And Father, for ministers who are and churches who are struggling to minister during a very difficult time and not even knowing what the future of the church is and when we can come back together semi-normally and, and that we're doing our best. So help us, God, tonight to to be faithful, to, to be the people you want us to be. And uh, that pleases you when we uh, try to live for you and we try to submit and obey, Father, what the, the law of the land is, even though we may not always agree with not being able to turn right on red when there's nobody coming or being able to do something that we think is foolish, like wearing a mask. Help us, Lord, to see the bigger picture, which is that we want to be a good witness and point people to the hope we have in Christ and that we would set the example as a Christian. So Father, just be with everyone tonight. I pray they're healthy. Bless all those on our prayer list that Lord, you would bring healing and you know those names and Lord, just to uh, protect uh, maybe some of those folks wanting these to just be more personal within the church family. You, you know their names and we have that prayer list, Lord, that's uh, being sent out tonight but lord be with all those that are on our prayer list we have so many that are sick we have folks that are going through therapy or treatments we have folks who have lost loved ones we pray for their comfort god and father i just pray that you would help me to know and us as a church how to minister in these difficult days father i understand i've I'm old enough and have been in ministry long enough to know we're never going to please everyone. That's why, Lord, I want to please you. I want to glorify you, and I want to point people to the hope we have in Christ because there's no fault in Jesus. So I pray tonight, God, that people, if they don't know you, would have a personal relationship with you. They would confess their sin, repent from their old habits and old ways, and receive the free gift of God's grace. Lord, that you would bring great revival and spiritual awakening in our land because we need you, Lord. We need revival. We need repentance. We need to seek your face. And, and we need to be humble, Lord, and, and know that when we do these things that we will hear from heaven and you will forgive our sin and you will heal our land. So help us to do that even now, Lord. And and I just pray, God, that uh, this virus would end soon and that you would uh, bring about, Father, a cure and, and protection from it, however that looks, and show our uh, educators, Lord, give them wisdom as they're trying to plan what school's going to look like. And just help us, God. We need you more than ever right now. And, and we love you and we thank you from whom all blessings flow. In the strong and holy name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. Thank you all tonight for, for being patient with me and, and I pray understanding because uh, we love you, I love you. And I, I want us all to get through this and know that God is with us. We might feel like things are out of control, but God is with us and he is in control and we must keep our eyes fixed upon Jesus. That's where our focus needs to be. Not on this person or that person or this law or that. Our focus should stay on Christ. Tonight as we close, I'm grateful that Allison Durham Spear, who sang for us uh, earlier uh, through this crisis, we're going to play that 
a recording again. She gave a special, special message to our church family and then just uh, sang a, a short song, but it's beautiful and we want to play it for you again. We appreciate Allison and the Spear family, their ministry, and we just ask that you would uh, hear this beautiful message and song because God cares for you and me so much that he would send his son to die for you and me. May we live in such a way to glorify him. God bless you, and thanks for worshiping with us. Have a great evening. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus Since I found in him a friend so strong and true i would tell you how he changed my life completely he did something that no other friend could do no one ever cared for me like Jesus, there's no other friend so kind as he. And you too. While all this is going on, I just wanted to holler at all you good folks at Forks of Elkhorn and Brother Brother Bill and, and Brother Todd and, and just say hello to you and um, tell you how blessed we are to know Jesus as our Savior. And I hope you're staying safe and I hope you're watching a lot of wonderful things on YouTube and Facebook, and I hope you're staying inspired. Uh, the Spirit of God is really rising up in all of us to stay connected and to pray for each other and to help each other. I just wanted to say hello to you. I'm looking forward to being back with you all again. Um, when all of this is over and it's a, it's a history event, um, we're going to worship the Lord together once again. So you guys take care and know that the Spear family loves you. Um, bless you in Jesus' name. <laughs>